Kaibigan, we're back sa ating Wednesday Roundtable at Lido. Pag-uusapan natin ang isang napakahalagang bagay sapagkat ito po yung naging tradisyon na sa iba't ibang bansa, yung pagkilala sa academic freedom. We'd like to find out ano ba talaga ang academic freedom? How far can people go in pursuit of academic freedom? Pag-uusapan natin yan. Lalo pa at may kulay politika sa ilang pagkakataon. I remember I had a classmate in high school who was arrested by the PCINP uh, during the martial law years at sabi nung provincial commander at the time na huli yung aking kaklase sapagkat merong armas na dala. Nung dalawin ko, sabi niya, sabi niya may dala kong baril. I'm just in possession of an ideology. So it's not illegal. Yung baril ko, incidental lang yon So, I'd like to find out, ano ba talaga pag sinabing may ideology. Pero karamihan ng ganito ay nabubuo raw sa mga campus. Today, we're fortunate to have with us guests from all over. Actually, parang reunion to ng mga taga-UPI. Mga taga-UPI ito eh. <laughs> si Vice President uh, Butch Delisay ng uh, Public Affairs ng University of the Philippines. Si Ginoong Mon Casiple ng IPER at si Professor Danilo Araw. Let's start uh, sa ating talakayan. We're live sa ating po namang uh, Radio Veritas Asia Filipino Service. In case you have questions, pakisuyo na lang. Ipadala nyo sa aking Facebook account. We will have them uh, acknowledged and ask our uh, guests today. How is the University of the Philippines today? Is it true na mas mahirap ang UP ngayon kung pag-uusapan ng parking lot kaysa aktivismo, Mr. Vice President? Well, talaga namang uh, nagbabago din yung karakter ng mga estudyante ng, ng UP. Ano? Hindi naman natin uh, may tatatwa na mas marami sigurong uh, middle class at upper middle class na estudyante sa, sa UP ngayon kaysa noong panahon ko bilang bilang freshman. Hindi ko masabi kung this is generally reflective ng lipunan din natin. Uh, pero uh, in other ways, uh, ganun pa rin ang UP, buhay pa rin ang, uh, ang talakayan at uh, balitaktakan uh, as we should expect uh, the state university to be. Yeah. Without sounding nostalgic, how would you describe the situation today? Uh, polarized po ba ang UP? Uh, o merong isang community na merong pagkilala at paggalang sa pananaw ng bawat isa? Uh, ewan ko kung ano masasabi ng aking mga uh, kasama rito, pero hindi ko naman siguro masasabing uh, uh, polarized. I would say na may malaking uh, middle, ano, uh, mga middle forces sa gitna na hindi mo naman masasabing uh, kanan o kaliwa kundi mga taong uh, you know nagde respond uh, you know from issue to issue at uh, binubuo yung kanilang uh, paninindigan not necessarily based on a deep uh, ideological foundation but but based on how how these uh, ongoing issues affect their lives siguro tanungin natin sila may, <laughs> okay. i'm sure may Sige. meron din All right. silang, Ang pinaka-junior sa atin, si Professor Danilo Araw. Professor? Uh, sa aking palagay, yung aktivismo ay buhay pa rin naman sa pamantasan. Uh, yun din naman yung realidad sa iba pang mga state universities and colleges na talagang nagsasuffer in terms of budget cuts and other issues that uh, plague the studentry as well as the faculty. Uh, kaya lang siguro, linawin din natin na uh, sa mahabang kasaysayan po kasi na Universidad ng Pilipinas, talagang dapat na nasa forefront yung mga aktivista dun sa mga iba't ibang kampanya. But just like before, I would say that the activists in terms of population, they constitute the minority 
Okay, but this is a very, very vibrant, and you may even argue that this is a noisy minority. Uh, but having said that, ang um, namimiss siguro natin nung, well, I don't want to wax no nostalgic here, kasi ang student number ko po 86. So naabutan ko yung implement... 86. Apo. Okay. So I entered UP fresh from the people's uprising, in, you, you know where. Uh, Kasi nung na-implement po yung Socialized Tuition and Financial Assistance Program, that was in 1989. Uh, medyo naabutan ko yung transition eh. And I began teaching uh, immediately after I graduated from the university, first as a lecturer. Now, what happened? Before, talking about parking, when I was a student, hindi masyadong problema yung parking. In fact, nakakapag-badminton pa kami sa parking lots noon eh. Sa sobrang mm. konti na mga sasakyan. But with the implementation of socialized tuition, mm -hmm. as well as other uh, mechanisms that made admissions uh, difficult for the poor students, uh, kahit sa usapin ng wika, dati English lang yung ginagamit sa UPCAT. Halimbawa, uh, just to cite an example, uh, it has become the composition of the students have changed ever since the implementation of socialized tuition. So, tama si VP Dalisay na ngayon parang mas marami yung middle class kesa upper middle. And this can be uh, validated empirically by looking at those who availed of uh, socialized tuition really. At saka ilan yung nasa subsidize. Of course now, wala na pong socialized tuition uh, effective last year, if I'm not mistaken, dahil sa tuition na. na. Opo. Mm. So, yun. So, ganun yung parang character. So, merong shifting din eh. Uh, which affects also our perspective in terms of academic freedom. I think the details of which will be discussed yes, later Yes, of course. On. We will have all the time in the world to talk about it. Mr. Kasiple, how do you look at it as a political mm -hmm. scientist and analyst? Well, uh, simply colored yung aking views dyan. Ano? Kasi uh, nandun ako sa UP sa panahon na pinaka-polarized ang UP. Ang una kong number is 72. Eh. Kaya lang, nag-martial o. Oh. Eh, Nag-underground na kami, no? Bumalik ko sa UP 77. At uh, ang aming mga uh, experience dito ay yung pakikibaka para ibalik yung kulidyan at saka yung uh, student council. Kaya sa amin yung uh, inabutan din kami nung 78 elections. Uh, okay, interim bata sang tokpansa. Doon ko na nakilala si Chris Aquino, actually 7 years old. Eh, kami naglagay nung Was stall. she 7 or 6 years old? 7, I think. Uh, okay. Siya yung nag-stand in para sa kanyang tatay doon sa proclamation rally ng mm. uh, laban. Okay. So, uh, kumbaga, eh, medyo exceptional yung circumstances, hindi normal academic. Ano yun. Uh, talagang ang buong campus ay uh, hati, ano? Pati fraternities, may mga fraternities na aligned openly with Marcos. May mas maraming fraternities ang talagang anti-Marcos. Uh -huh. At uh, panahon namin, nag-aaral si Aimee no? at saka si Irene sa UP. Uh -huh. uh, kasama siyempre yung mga PSG. <laughs> Kaya may classroom ka na, <laughs> papasok ka, eh, dadaan ka muna sa gauntlet ano? ng Talaga. mga nakabarong Tagalog. Bago ka makalapit. Uh, Pero nagbago ba yung kultura sa UP over the years? Actually, kung tingna, uh, sa, sa karanasan ko dyan, yung usapin ng parking, hindi ganun kasing dala, pero problem na rin. Kasi hindi totoo at uh, tama yung view kanina na minority activista. Even at the height ng activism sa UP, minority activista. Ang UP kasi, kung tingnan mo naman yung history, ano? Eh, yan yung bul ano yun, eh, balwarte yan ng mga tinitrain for bureaucracy, for uh, uh, ng mga mayaman. Uh -huh. so, kaya, expected mo dyan, mga anak, ano, ng mga opisyal din sa gobyerno, anak ng mga mayaman, marami sa kanila nakapasok dyan. Uh -huh. So, parang, ano nga eh, microcosm sa ng Philippine society, kung tutusin. Ang politika sa UP, halos nagre-reflect yan ang politika sa bansa. Okay. Ano po ba yung standards ngayon sa UP? Uh, would you say mas istrikto, mas maluwag? Dahil lang sa nagkakagulo eh, dahil maraming nag-apply sa UPCAT eh. Hindi ako nagkakamali eh, na headline pa kayo sa primetime news dahil lang sa maraming pila. Please. Well, yun namang malaking uh, pila sa UPCAT ay uh, may ilang dahilan yan. Unang-una, syempre free tuition. At pangalawa, yung K-12. 
At yung that particular day na nagkagulo doon sa, sa pila, ay yun yung araw para sa mga private schools. Eh, ang ugali naman ng mga private school parents natin ay asamahan yung mga, yung mga anak nila. Actually, sila yung nakarami doon, yung mga magulang. Kasi nung public school na, common din siguro makaday off, siyempre mga magulang, at independyente naman yung mga bata, eh wala nang ganung kaguluhan. Uh, okay. ano, na, wala, wala na mga pila uh, nung mga sumunod na, sumunod na deadline. Ah, wala na. Kakunti na lang sa umaga, tapos by tangahali, wala na. Okay. Pero sa bawat isang daang pumapasok sa UP, ilan po yung nakaka-graduate? Ilan yung namumundok? Yan, 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 yan. Eh, may statistics ba tayo dyan? <laughs> <laughs> hindi, pero yun na kakagraduate na lang o hindi na yun namumundok? Ay, hindi ko lang alam ang, ang datos natin dyan. Ano? Uh, siguro naman mataas naman ang, ang, uh, ang porsyento niyan. Kasi kahit kami namang, ako halimbawa, nagaling ako sa henerasyon ng first quarter storm, nag-drop out ako ng sampung taon. Ano? 30 na ako nung bumalik sa UP. Ibig sabihin, kahit kami yung mga luma, medyo lumalabas ang dali, eh bumabalik din Babalik uh, para tapusin niyo aming mga kurso. <laughs> so, ganun pala. Yes, Professor. I, uh, tama. Tama si VP Dalisay. Wala tayong statistics on ilan yung graduate, ilan yung namundok. Pero yung, statis, yung medyo malapit-lapit na statistik ang pwedeng tingnan natin, out of every 100 students, mga 30 or so yung no-show. Yeah. Doon sa UPCAT. Uh, uh, we're talking about those who took the UPCAT. So, in other words, meron pa rin mga pumapasa ng UPCAT na hindi talaga tumutuloy sa UP. But there are various reasons for this. Kasi nabanggit ni VP Dalisa yung sa usapin ng mga private schools, normally, the rich uh, students... Uh, would prefer to go to other schools na di hamak na, no offense to UP, mas maganda yung facilities kahit na mas mahal yung tuition. O kaya naman, nakakuha sila ng scholarship dun sa eskwelahang yon. Minsan naman, may mga pagkakataon na delayed yung release ng UPCAT results, kaya yung iba nakapagbayad na ng reservation fee na, na non-refundable, kaya umalis na lang kahit na ayaw. Yeah. Tapos, Uh, I'm sorry, uh, last point na lang. Tapos, the other point that I would like to stress, which is closely related to our topic, has to do with activism. Mm -hmm. Minsan, may mga magulang na parang, ayun, hinayaang mag-exam yung anak, mm -hmm. and they're crossing their fingers na sana huwag pumasa sa UP kasi iba yung gusto nila. Pero uh -huh. pag pumasa, pinagbabawalan. May mga kaso rin pong ganon, even if it's anecdotal. I'm sorry, yeah. VP Dalisay. Go yes, ahead. Mr. Uh, Vice President. I just want to add, many of these well-off kids uh, take the UPCAT uh, uh, just to say that they were able to, to pass it. Uh, uh, yes, you know, bragging rights, but eventually they don't really come in. But uh, since, uh, since you know, no-shows were mentioned, I should say that many of these are also poor students. In fact, the poorest of the poor. And these are the students we should be going after you know, to offer uh, extraordinary support to them. Ito yung mga tagatugigaraw, tagasambuanga, who against all odds, pumasa sa upkat, And then they, they, they pass it only to realize that they cannot afford the cost of living, let's say, in, in, in Diliman. Uh -huh. And eventually, they, 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 they don't appear. So these are, these are the no-shows we, we should be going after if we really want to democratize uh, the student population. Yeah, I, I remember, uh, yung aming si JP, sabi ko, kumuha ka ng exam sa UP. Sabi niya, hindi, doon ako mag-aaral eh. Sa kabila. Oh, sige, kako. Pero subukan natin kung papasa ka na walang review. <laughs> Dahil yung mga pamangkin ko, wala na rin bakasyon, talaga nagre-review. And he made it, caught a course. Pero sabi niya, tapos na yung, ano, yung uh, usapan natin. Dahil pumasa na ako, hindi na ako mag-aaral. Pero sabi niya, Tay, bakit ba obsessed ka na makapasa ako sa upkat na walang review? Eh kako, hindi ako pumasa sa upkat eh. Gusto ko lang makita kung yung produkto ng Manila Science pwede pumasa sa UP. And he made it. Siguro mabilis lang. Yung mga review center ngayon, actually bago lang yan. Nung panahon natin, wala namang review. Re wala, well, wala review, review. Well, I'm not saying that you shouldn't review, but you can review on your own. So, yes. kumbaga parang naging negosyo na lang. No offense meant to the review centers here, pero naging negosyo na rin siya. Kaya yon medyo pinagkakitaan din, unfortunately. So, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Mag Maganda itong pinag-uusapan. Pero, yung po bang kahirapan will always be a factor for one to consider going to college? Sigurado. Kasi ang gastos para sa karamihan ng mga pamilya, in fact, sa marami siguro, number one factor. Kaya 
between a private school and public school, marami dyan public school. Gusto nila private kasi nakita siguro na yung quality or whatever. Pero ang dating, uh, dating sa point ma-realize walang pera. Even oh, with scholarship, okay. ang marami scholarship kasi hindi naman comprehensive eh. Uh -huh. uh, bibigyan ka ng free tuition, eh paano yung pangarawaraw mo? Okay. Ngayon, ganun, o kaya kung taga-provinsa ka, yung travel uh, from province and pagbalik, ano? Tapos yung mga daily na gasto sa eskwilahan, mga extracurricular, mga ganyan. Uh, at the end of the day, talagang sakripisyo. Hindi lang nung estudyante, pati nung pamilya. Uh -huh. Ang UP education, sa tingin ko, sa alam ko mga kwento rin dyan, ano? uh, lalo mga nagdudormitory, kasi karamihan dyan, taga-provinsya, ay talagang grabe yung sakripisyo. Hindi nila. Uh, yung mga joke dyan na binibenta na yung kalabaw mga... <laughs> May mga ilang kaso kung narinig na umabot sa ganung punto. Oh, nasabi ng magulang, eh, mas mabuti na yung kalabaw kaysa sa iyo. Ganun. Dahil Hindi standby naman. ka sa commercial siya sa Bulingan, sa UP. Hindi, <laughs> 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 pero, you know, yung mga student organizations, how would we know if these student organizations are really organizations para isulong yung kaalaman at kabatiran ng mga estudyante? Dahil sa nagkakakulay eh. Sabi nila, o yan, kaliwa yan, o yan, ganito yan. Paano po yun? Anong tingin ninyo ron? Siguro, as former college secretary, I could tell you na merong accreditation system din naman sa university. So, may, of course, hindi lahat ng organizations recognized officially ng administration because uh, merong iba would choose not to be recognized for whatever reason. But for the most part, many of the organizations, whether these are academic organizations, political organizations, fraternities, or sororities, they have their own general programs of action at ito yung basis then for their recruitment. Uh, uh -huh. uh, at saka may student code naman eh, na, ginagab, na nagiging gabay uh, para sa mga studyante at saka sa mga organization. I should add then na ano eh, one empirical evidence of activism being a, activists being a minority would be the percentage of students who belong to organizations uh, yung parang normal na statistics talaga doon through the years, parang le minsan 10% or less than 10% lang talaga ng mga estudyante yung nakapaloob sa mga organization. Hindi pa kasama yung mga aktibo talaga, uh -huh. membership lang. So in other words, majority of students, parang ang vision nila, parang yung sinasabi ni BP Dalisay kanina, parang nasa middle, parang bahay, aral, parang bahay, classroom, library, yung parang nagiging lifestyle nila, which seems to be common. Ah, all so, right. minority lang talaga yung pumapasok talaga sa mga organizations, whether these are academic, political, fraternities, or sororities. Uh, what's the latest so, about fraternities? Well, nadyan pa rin sila, pero, uh, uh, and I must confess na frat man ako, no? pero, pero I think they're, they much, must be less popular today than they were before. Tandaan din natin kasi na, limbawa, if we move like 40 years back, nung, nung panahon namin as, as freshmen, uh, Marami pumapasok sa UP galing sa mga probinsya, naghahanap, ulang man lang kakilala yan, naghahanap ng isang grupong kakalinga sa kanila. Kaya mas malakas yung attraction noon ng mga fraternities at iba pang mga region-based organizations uh, halimbawa. Uh, uh -huh. uh, eh, ngayon, apparently, they have other coping mechanisms. Ano? Okay. Uh, kaya, uh, kaya medyo pumabagsak din yung, yung appeal ng mga na mga frats at ibang organisasyon. Lalo na sa frats, siyempre, na uh, balitang-balita yung mga, yung mga hazing at mga namamatay pa. Kaya, uh, so, so uh, not surprisingly, uh, I think their, their attractiveness has declined. Really? So, ano yung pinakamabentang organisasyon ngayon? Ano po yung nakikita nyo? Fans Club? Hindi, <laughs> panahon namin, Barsitarians. Ito yung mga regional organizations. Oh. Ah. Hanggang ngayon, popular yan kasi... Oh. Aside sa regionalism involved, yung iba yung magkakakilala kayo, pareho lingwahe, mm. eh, cultural background, etc. Uh -huh. Magkakakilala-kilala. At ano yan, for life yung mga relasyon dyan. May nag-aasawa pa nga dyan. Ano? Talaga? Ay, nagkatuloy yan. Marami yung kilala sa ganong organisasyon. Do they now regret na pinakasalan nila yung pakilala nila? Uh, mahirap, mahirap sagutin niya. No? <laughs> <laughs> Pero, ma ang role usually ng mga ganyang organisasyon, 
yung usual ha? iba pa yung political organization kasi dahil may external ano pa yan eh, na factors pero yung mga academic organization libertarians kasi usually related yan sa yung maging parang society nila sa loob ng ng Ah, okay. Yes, sir. Tsaka tandaan natin, nung, again, nung uh, mga limipas na panahon, uh, about 1950s, ang malakas na organisasyon dyan ay UPSCA, yung Student Catholic uh, Action. Action ano? Tapos pumasok naman ng 60s, tinapatan sila ng SCAUP, <laughs> yung Student Cultural Association, at ito na, pumasok na siyempre yung Kabataang Makabayan, SDK ako, SDK ako, Nationalist Corps. Oo, oh, samahan, double meet. No? Oo, oh, samahan, double meet. Ang biro, <laughs> ang biro sa amin nun. Uh, so, uh, depende rin yan sa panahon kung anong klaseng organisasyon ang dadagsaan ng mga, ng mga bata. Ah, uh, right. So, there was a time, rambulan na rambulan sa UP. Yung mga fraternity. Mga 60s yan. Meron pa rin, pinakahuli, yung mga 80s. Meron pa rin, nagkakatinginan lang na masama. Bugbuga na. Pero ngayon, I think natuto na rin yung mga maraming frats eh. Kasi halimbawa sa frat ko, at alam ko sa ibang frat din, at tinigilan namin ang physical initiation. Kasi sinasabi ko sa kanila, pag ako nakahuli sa inyong nag-PPI, ako, ako magdadala sa inyo sa presinto. Uh, nat uh -huh. Natauhan din siguro dito sa sunod-sunod na pag-aabuso nitong uh, ito na, na mga neophytes na yeah. ang walang kinahantong ang maganda. Yeah. What about censorship dun sa campus paper? You know, somebody mentioned to me that there was a case noon sa University of Santo Tomas na sinesensor yung varsitarian. Sa UP ba nagkaroon din ng ganong mga pagkakataon? Through the years meron. Uh, in fact, I think it was during the time of Bono Adaza na ano, parang ayaw ipalabas yung headline. So ang ginawa niya, parang blinangko niya yung, ano, yung kulidyan para ipakita. Ito yung censored part na ayaw ipalabas ng administration. So may mga ganong kaso, but these are very isolated cases. For the most part... Uh, I think we're proud to say that uh, the Philippine Collegian has enjoyed some degree of editorial independence. Bagamat dati, may mga faculty advisor din doon, but the, all the faculty advisor does is to just simply sign the vouchers and appointment papers and ano, walang masyadong pakialam dun sa content. Pero, uh, pero actually, Danny, ipapoint out ka rin, ano, kung, kung dito na may kasaysayan ng UP, In its earlier decades, may maigting ang, uh, ang uh, maraming instances ng matatawag mong censorship dyan. Yes. Because the faculty advisor was much more powerful than he or she became later on. Bigyan ka tayo, ka tayo ng isang kaso ano, na binasa ko ng isang, ng isang araw lang. Uh, mga early 1930s, si Arturo Tolentino, noon ay isang law student at, at uh, editor ng Collegian, Uh, naka, nakabangga niya yung dean niya, si Jorge Bocobo uh, over yung hair horse cutting bill. Anyway, yung is, uh, issue na may kinalaman din kay Quezon. Si Bocobo at si Quezon magkaalyado. Uh, pinasunog uh, uh, ng, 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 ng advisor ng Collegian yung 900 copies ng Collegian. Really? Ano? Yes, at pinatigil yung, yung pagprint ng, ng susunod pa. Nagprotesta si, si Tolentino kay Palma, kay Rafael Palma. Sinuportahan siya ni Palma. Umakyat naman si Bocobo sa, sa Board of Regents na hawak ni Quezon. In-overturn si Palma. At dahil dito, sa kaso na, na nagsimula sa isang sinulat sa kolidyan, bumuelta ngayon si Quezon later on at uh, sinabi niya, o oh, sige, line item budgeting tayo ngayon. Wala kayong lampsan. <laughs> ano? At doon uh, nagsimula. Na, na, matindihan. At dahil doon, No nag-retire si Palma, hindi siya binigyan man lang ng gratuity ng, ng pamantasan. In other words, pinarusahan si Palma ni, ni, ni Quezon. So, so maraming ramifications itong mga, tingnan mo magsisimula yun sa isang artikulo sa Collegian, pero nagre-reflect nag yan ng mga mas malaking tension sa, sa politika ng, ng bansa. Talaga. Mon, what's your take on this? Well, ang pinakamalalang karanasan dyan, eh, nawala ang Collegian ng Marcia Law. No? Uh, 72, pagbaba uh, ng martial law. Actually, lahat ng campus papers. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, at may mga hinuli ng mga kulidyan editors. editors. Uh -huh. uh, may mga uh, namundok din. Oh. Actually, 78, una bumalik ang kulidyan. Pero dahil sa 77, nag na na ibalik nga. Uh -huh. Pero, limang taon yan na ang kulitya na nabubuo ay isang underground paper. 
may kulit na natuloy pero yan yung mga iniiwan sa madaling araw sa mga uh, colleges ano uh-huh. hindi mo makikita ko sino no sa kanya-kanyang dampot yeah. hindi mahuli pero ga may ganun talaga at uh, maraming pa- hindi, mga istorya na ano common yan actually sa Korean uh-huh. sa buong panahon may mga religious censorship diyan yes. uh, ah ganun oh yung pa- si delay ni Hall ngayon eh father delay ni yan yung OPS ka, basta powerful force sa campus, palaging kabanggaan yan, mga kulitian. Mm. Mm. Ah, talaga, meron na palang ganun, ha? 50s and 60s. Uh, 50s and 60s. I, I, I recall, uh, kami yung naging Manila Association of College Editors dahil pinagbawal yung CEGP. Eh. Mm. Kami ni na Chuchay Mulina Fernandez. Kami yung magkakasama. Kahit nasa Lucena ako nun, eh, kasama ako sa grupo. Kaya, Tama, bumalik nga yung campus papers nung mga 78 na. There was restriction indeed. No? Pero, I, I don't know, would you recall uh, editors na mga campus paper na naging big time din? Malumangahas was uh, the first na editor nung bumalik na kulitian. Ah, okay. And uh, she was still uh, second year college at the time. Oh, really? You know, kaya, ayan, yung sikat siguro. Sikat, sikat siguro yun. hanggang ngayon. Yeah. <laughs> Dalawang bagay, pag sikat ka, sikat ka. O kung hindi, notorious ka. Yeah, kasi sasabihin mo kasi, uh, hindi naman kung mga collegian editor ka, eh, you would be necessarily on the or left main, side of things. Or in the main Kasi stage, halimbawa, or... let's take si, si Leonardo Perez, daging editor ng collegian yan. Pero noong 1961, siya yung namumuno doon sa pag-uusig ano, doon sa, uh, sa kongreso ng sinasabi niya mga komunista sa UP. Kaya si na Professor Yapis at yung mga iba pang ano, na na-charge ng sedition, eh, pinapunta sila sa kongreso para managot daw para sa kanila mga paniniwala. At si, si Perez pa, na dating collegian editor, ang taga-usig nila. So, dito makikita na nagbabago. Hindi lang nagbabago yung anyo, nagbabago rin yung pananaw. Actually, babalikan ko yung sinabi ko kanina, no? microcosm ng politics. Kasi usually, nagpi-play out yung national politics sa UP elections, pati yung handling ng kulidyan, yes. pati yung mga relasyon ng fraternity, yes. at mga iba pang organisasyon. Panahon ko, may tinatawag na frat alliance. No? Ito yung uh, political ng nature. Lahat ng anti-Marcos na fraternity, 16 yan, nagsama-sama para labanan ng Upsilon sa Sigmaro. Kasi malakas ang dalawang yon. Dala ng ito yung uh, tumatay yung align no kay Marcos. Pero sa loob ng UP tuwing uh, lalo na kung tuwing campus election nung bumalik na, talagang yan ang naghahanay yan. So dumating yan sa point na nahinto yung mga fraternity rumbles kasi nadala na sa politika yung mga mga fraternity. Uh, oh. Yung nagra-rumble ngayon ay yung aligned politically. Kaya uh-huh. may mga cases niya na nakakabugbugan doon sa panahon namin. Because of politics? Oo, oh, ay, ay lusuban ng tambayan. Ano? Pero yung mga miyembro <laughs> ng alliance, eh, walang ano, may tools yan. Okay. Uh, Be- pero to, to be yeah. fair, to be fair din, halimbawa sa Upsilon, which is celebrating its 100th year ngayong taon, Uh, iba-iba rin ang paniniwala nila dyan. Although, of course, at a certain point, eh, siguro masasabi natin mas nasa side sila ni, ni Marcos. Pero siyempre, nandiyan si Aquino. Nandiyan si Melito Glor na namuno sa isang pangkat ng NPA. Ano? Oo. Tapos, meron ka pang uh, si Salvador Laurel. If I'm not mistaken, he's also a member of the fraternity. Yes, oo, oo. Yeah. Actually, kahit ang Sigmaro. Ganyan din. Sigmaro, ganyan. And really, Sigmaro. Rafi by Lucy si Sigma. Really? So, how does it play? Kung magkaka-fraternity kayo, brother kayo, pagkatapos iba-iba yung pananaw, ito ba eh, kinakakitaan ng academic freedom? Ang hirap sabihin sa ano, kasi internal usually ang politics ng fraternity. Pero ako, sa tingin ko, isang bahagi yun na unique sa Philippine politics na may mga tao ka nag-aaway aktore sa politika, magkaibang mm. panig. Ang fraternity nag-provide na isang channel eh, sa back mga channel. mga back channel yung tawag dyan. No? Negosasyon, mga, kung merong mga rules na kailangan pagkaisahan. Pero these are informal rules. Ano? 
pagdating sa open, eh talagang uh, magkabanggaan. Okay. Pero ang fraternity provides that uh, link, ano? Very good. Uh, and, and, and the fraternity, yes. of course, is is a feudal <laughs> system yeah. of, of masters <laughs> and, and, and neophytes. It's it's a medium for social mobility. Yeah. Pumapasok kang estudyante dyan sa, sa pag-asa na dahil kasama niya itong mga, mga malalaking tao, ay aangat din siya sa, sa buhay niya at sa, at sa, at sa lipunan. So it has both, of course, its its pluses and minuses. Uh, the the pluses being na pwede kayong mag-usap uh, back channel, ano? Uh -huh. Tulad sa, sa fraternity ko, Alpha Sigma, makikita mo dyan ang isang buong range ng, ng paniniwala. Uh -huh. At mga posisyon mula sa, mula sa naniniwala halimbawa sa kasulukuyang Pangulo at actively sumusuporta sa kanya at yung mga nag-o-oppose din talaga. Okay. Hindi po natin napapag-usapan yung vanguards, yung sa ROTC. Uh, meron pa bang ROTC ngayon in the first place? Meron pa naman, uh, Sunday Soldiers. How was it during your time? Hindi ba isang click din itong UP vanguards? Eh, di ba si Fabian Ver yung isa sa mga pangunahing stalwart ng vanguards? Uh, well, yeah, through the years, parang may ganong negative perception toward the vanguards as far as the activists were concerned. Because we see the military as an inherently fascist institution. Tapos yun na nga, with, with the Fabian Ver equation there, so parang mas napalala pa. Uh, yeah, so that's the case. And during our time in the 1980s, uh, mandatory yung ROTC. And in fact, uh, I would even dare say na delay ako na isang SEM, hindi pa dahil sa thesis, kundi dahil sa ROTC. Because as a matter of principle, I didn't want to take ROTC. Pero mapilit yung nanay ko, dapat daw graduate ako. Pero si, so yun, pinagbigyan ko na. Kaya na-delay ako ng, ano, ng konti. But nevertheless, uh, having said that, uh, right now, it's optional uh, as stated by VP Dalisay kasi meron na tayong NSTP. So yung national, yeah. So the students have the option to take on and other courses that may involve civic work. Uh, meron pa rin nag-e-enroll sa ROTC, pero parang mas komonti na. Okay. But the vanguard uh, is still very much around. Okay. Do we see uh, the polarization sa UP ng mga makadigong at mga kontradigong o istambay na lang ng Starbucks? Ano po ba? Parang para sa akin, nahihirap sabihin na polarized kasi hindi masyadong visible, I think, yung mga, yung mga pro administration to, to be to be honest eh. I mean I'm sure that uh, I'm sure that there are many of them but uh, they generally keep quiet o makikita mo lang sa social media kahit, kahit sa faculty meron yan mara, mar, marami pero hindi sila gaanong visible or or vocal because I think they also expect of course yung yung uh, you know the blowback jan but but I would still dare say that the that the administration probably enjoys uh, the support of uh, quite a number of UP faculty and students for whatever reason. Now, give us a brief history. What happened one Saturday when the Kabataang Barangay met at UP? Na parang dumalo pa yata si President Dan Concepcion because he was once part of the KB yes. at merong kritisismo mula naman sa kabilang panig. Ano po ba ang kwento rito? We'd like to hear it from you. Well, sa aking kaalaman, uh, lumitaw doon sa uh, parang kalendaryo ni, ni Presidente Concepcion na magkakaroon ng isang kabataang barangay chairman's reunion. Ano? Yun, ang, yun ang basa ko doon sa kanyang kalendaryo. Uh, and my, uh, I, this was like a few hours before it happened. Ang basa ko doon ay maliit na pagditipon lang ito ng mga KB chairman. May mga taon pang nakalagay doon eh. At hindi naman niya dinay-deny na kasama siya sa kabataang barangay noon. Kaklase pa nga siya ni, ni Aimee. No, kabatch niya yan sa, niya sa College of Law. Uh, so he made a personal decision to, to attend. And uh, I think what happened was that this turned out to be a much bigger uh, Kabataang Barangay affair, no? practically a, 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 a Marcos uh, reunion, I mean, uh, or a reunion of Aimee with her supporters. And so uh, the, the uh, attendance of, of President Concepcion there was criticized by, by many uh, who read it 
uh, as an endorsement of the of the Marcoses, which uh, President Concepcion uh, subsequently uh, denied and apologized for, meaning uh, his his attendance. Doon. Uh, I'm sure see, uh, Danny will have something to add. Yeah. Danny, at that was Simon. Yeah. Uh, as BP Delisa said, uh, parang may apology naman na ginawa. But I put apology here in quotation marks because he apologized for the pain that was caused by his appearance, not an apology for his appearance because there's a difference between uh, the paki, two. Paki differentiate mo. Sige nga. Okay, yeah. An apology for the pain that was caused by the appearance. Yun yung unang-unang sentence dun sa two-paragraph apology. So, kumbaga, parang the apology was made because there were some sensibilities that were offended in the pro There were some sectors that were offended. But uh, the, the offense has something to do not really with his appearance per se, but with two... Uh, things that were vividly photographed. Number one, he did not just appear, he spoke at the conference. And we, do, we don't know what he said and what he did not say because there's no transcript of the speech. Number two, he was seen flashing the victory sign. Okay? And to make things worse, nakasmile pa siya. Okay? To be fair, the picture doesn't put Aimee in the company of uh, uh, President Concepcion, pero kasama niya yung mga dati niya mga kaibigan. And of course, the fact that he said that uh, he just wanted to be with old-time friends uh, whom he missed so much, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but why would you hold it on UP grounds? Kasi ako, I don't want to impute malice on anybody here, but uh, the organizers of the Kabataang Bat Barangay Reunion, if I may hazard to second guess, they chose UP to prove that people have moved on because the symbolism is very, very jarring, diba? So, yun. And to think that they danced to the tune of Rock Baby Rock, sung by VST and Company, and the frontliners of VST and Company were the ones who composed Magkaisa, which was the anthem of the People's Uprising in 1986. So, parang, parang yun. It's a symbolism of reconciliation which the UP community finds very unacceptable. So that's one reason why a few days after the, the KB reunion, uh, the No Erasures, No Revisions Coalition, of which I'm part, decided to hold a press conference to come up with concrete demands on how we can rectify the situation. So right now, I think it's up to the UP system administration to look at the demands, uh, which were in incidentally adopted by the University Council subject to certain revisions, pero the revisions during the University Council meeting last Monday were generally acceptable because uh, they ended up strengthening the demands uh -huh. instead of weakening it. So, yun na nga, uh, siguro pwede rin i-announce dito na I think in a few days' time, the University Council will be releasing the statement uh -huh. uh, that strongly criticizes the President, the UP President, and uh, there are certain demands that are being... Uh, put forward. Yeah. Okay. Would you care to say something about it? No, I, I think the president is waiting for the uh, formal presentation of, of the demands. But I was there at the, at the council uh, meeting, and I think the demands are, uh, uh, you know, we know where they're coming from. We, we can understand uh, the sentiments of the of the community. And I think the, the one really good thing that came out of this, uh, of course, there was a, a, a lot of hurt feelings all around, but uh, the one good thing that came out of this was that it galvanized uh, the awareness and the resolve of people to resist uh, dictatorship and despotism uh, at whatever phase of our history. Okay. Okay. Would you care to say something about it? Being a political analyst that you are. Sabi sa iyo, Michael Ko sa mga UP. That 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 actually is uh, advance notice sa uh, 2019 elections. Ang minimingo dito. Really? Uh huh. Uh, na it is really a a ploy ano ng Marcoses. Kasi nga in 2016 election ang malaking factor dun sa pagkatalo ni Bongbong was the Marshall issue. Uh, I, I recall dyan na mayroong survey silang ginawa na they thought that they had a millennial ano, uh, in their side, uh, around 34% ang expectation. Yeah. What came out was 11%. Uh -huh. And the big factor there was the campaign na ibalik yung issue ng Marshall on the table. That happened. 
At yung nangyari sa UP, I think, reflects that. So, uh-huh. sa akin, parang, it is as it should be, ano? Eh, magta-try sila, may counter, and uh, that will happen also in the 2019 elections, or even 2022. <laughs> Hanggat uh-huh. hindi mo masara, ano? <laughs> yung issue ng martial law. The Marcos says will be hounded you know, the issue na yan. And unless they say something about it, no? Eh, they are in the ano pa rin eh? Denial pa rin. <laughs> yeah. Yun ang mabigat doon. Denial pa rin. Oo, oh, pero may impact na ito sa succeeding Marcos generations, ano? Kasi hindi na ito usapin ng mga principals. The only one left now is Imelda. Yung mga kabataan, both the Romualdeses and the Marcoses, are faced with a dilemma na yung susunod na mundo ay uh, the Marcos name may not exactly be the uh, coin of politics dito. Meaning they have to to, to be on their own. Ano? Uh-huh. Ngayon, ako tingin ko, nagtatry sila to ride on the Marcos uh, reputation uh, uh, sa followers nila at uh, ang problema ay reaching out beyond that. Kasi pag nag-reach out na sila beyond that, ang may inkwentro na nila ay anti-Marcos. Ah, okay. Polarize pa rin ang lipunan natin eh. Uh, okay. Hanggang ngayon. Uh, pero siguro linawin din natin just to be fair to VP Dalisay, the UP System Administration and the Diliman Administrations, um, hindi naman sila yung nag-allow dun sa reunion na mangyari. It was held at the bahay ng alumni, and I think you all know this, it was the UP Alumni Association that allowed it. Uh, the object of our criticism also centers on the UPAA. Ang reasoning kasi nila, they are open to everybody. Okay, Of course, they did not say that as long as you can afford the atrocious rates. Nasa 9,000 to 11,000 kasi yung rates ng, ano, ng pagbayad. And that would explain why even for ordinary gatherings or activities of, uh, some, uni- of some, some organizations, especially student organizations, hindi talaga ginagawa sa bahay ng alumni kasi masyadong mahal. Now, we take issue with that because uh, it is ironic to think that the Marcoses are invoking the freedom that they suppressed from 1972 to 1986 and something that they may plan to suppress once they get into power, once Bong Bong becomes president, for example. So we don't want that. And we don't want the, this idea of UP being a marketplace of ideas. Hindi po tayo palengke. This is an academic institution. Some say it's just a reunion, hayaan na lang. Pero hindi eh. It's the symbolism. It's the statement that would... Ha- that would uh, it is the message Uh, that would be sent uh, to people as to why those things will be allowed. Okay. Kasi yung ideas naman talaga, okay yan, pwede nating pag-usapan. But we have to adhere to the tradition of honor and excellence and uh-huh. the militant tradition of the university. So it is in that context that we have to analyze all those ideas. Hindi pwede yung para kang napaka-postmodern okay. na accept na lang na accept. Okay, Very sorry. Good. No, no, it's okay. It's all right. Yes. Uh, uh, and this is where the, the, the debate gets interesting. Uh, because, of course, uh, makikita din natin itong issue na to sa mga maraming pamantasan sa Amerika. Halimbawa, kung saan, uh, where uh, neo-Nazi groups, for example, uh, would demand the right to be heard within an academic setting. So, so now the question is, if you are a true uh, believer in freedom of expression, Should you uh, provide uh, a, venue. A, a venue for that kind of uh, uh, reprehensible uh, ideology? No? And, and, uh, and, and for me, speaking just for myself and, and not the administration, because we have no policy set uh, here, because this is a very open issue. For, for me, I would argue that If you argue for academic freedom, then you have to be prepared for all kinds of, of, of contrary and even obnoxious positions. Because there is no prohibition on you, on the other hand, to object to that expression. So, uh, so nandun tayo ngayon. Halimbawa kasi nga sa UPAA, although of course private na grupo sila, 
they, they have not imposed a political standard on the previous use of the Bahaina alumni. In fact, it has been used by the CPP and DF for its own uh, uh, activities. Uh, Grace Poe had, uh, uh, had her launch a proclamation there. So if you apply a political standard now, where do you draw the line and who is going to, who is going to apply and impose that? I'm not saying you can't do that, but this is an issue to be threshed out both on, uh, both on philosophical and legal grounds. Yeah. Very good. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, but of course, there are certain limitations to freedom. Maganda na pinag-uusapan natin ito ngayon eh. Uh, for example, when it comes to neo-Nazism or even the Filipino ideology or Marxism, ito mga bagay na to pinag-uusapan sa classroom. But as far as the faculty is concerned, he or she has the option in terms of how to handle this. But going by the tradition of UP, ang framework mo is to really discuss, for example, neo-Nazism, Hitler, the Third Reich, but within the context of the atrocities that were committed. Hindi yan yung parang balansyado na on one hand, Adolf Hitler should be commended for being a great painter, which is true. Or for establishing the autobahn and the, the efficient transportation system in Germany. Totoo naman yun. Dinidiscuss din yun. Pero ang mas i-highlight yung anti-Semitism niya. Yung genocide na nangyari as a result of the Third Reich. It is also in that context that we also discuss Marcos. Now, inviting these quote-unquote reprehensible people to use the words of VP Dalisay on campus is another matter altogether because it is like giving credence to what they have to say even if based on your ideological standpoint as based on the tradition of uh, honor and excellence in the university, parang you accept as truth whatever it is that they say. Okay. That would partly explain, kahit sa mga forum on the Ampatuan Massacre, the culture of impunity, our college, the College of Mass Communication has taken a stand on it. But we don't pretend to say that during a forum, we have to be balanced, we have to call somebody from the Ampatuan so that they can say their piece. Of course not, because uh -huh. they're not welcome on it, uh, in the college or on campus for that matter in, in the first place because they committed a dastardly crime. Okay. So why would we welcome them? Okay. So that's one way of looking at it. Now, this brings me to a question, Kaimon. Why is it that uh, there is this belief that Filipinos have no sense of history. <laughs> Actually, sobra nga yung sense of history. Sobra. Okay. Oh, kasi can, can, I have, can I hear Ramon's uh, take on this, on, on this issue? <coughs> yes, please. Na, no, na, ito, papapasukin mo ba yung mga taong who are generally know, seen to be uh -huh. generally seen to be in a very negative... Okay. Uh, Actually, I would support both of you. Kasi UP actually is not really an institution na ginawa for protest. It comes naturally kasi may mga estudyante, may mga teacher, may mga uh, nakatira doon na nagkaroon ng mga issue at yun ang natural na, na nangyayari. No? But remember, UP, itinayo yan colonial times to train colonial bureaucrats. At in fact, ang history ng UP kung tutuusin, may kanan, may kaliwa talaga palagi dyan. Yes. So if you're talking, let's say, i-allow mo ba yung ganun, it's not a question of allow eh. It's a question ng sa UP, kahit sinong grupo na doon sa UP, pwede maglabas ng posisyon, eh talaga, ilalabas na whether you agree or not. Ano? Nasa nature yung university. But then, merong isang part ng tradition sa UP yung openness ano, sa ideas. And usually that, that results in action. Kaya kung nung nagkaroon ng Marcos dictatorship, panimbawa, UP stood out. Nung panahon ng FQS, panahon ng Diliman Commune, it took a stand as a community. As a community. As a community. Yun ang pinanggagalingan ng tradisyon na yun. But ako, ang karanasan ko kasi, Yung sabi ko nga, eh, kakla, nandun si Aimee at saka si Irene, ano, there were protests. But it never came to the point na binlock sila doon. Ah, walang ganun. Sila nagtry na pumasa. Hindi sila pinasa ng mga, tit, mga professor nila. And they left on their own. Teka. Meaning the UP process itself ang nag, ano. Wala namang, protest, wala namang eh, personal na galit yung mga professor, kaya binagsak ganun. Wala eh. Si, uh, karanasan ko, di ba, si Irene, eh, nagre-research sa Third World Studies eh. Eh, si Randy David pa yun na doon. I mean, di, di, as, as persons, as, uh, wala problema. 
Uh-huh. But then, iba yung usapin ng principle. Ano? Uh-huh. Na, ang UP community stood out as one of the uh, anti-Marcos dictatorship na centers. Do you so, have any ideas how they felt during the time? Eh, talagang passion. Eh, passionate yan. At, at kaya nga sabi ko sa iyo, sa fraternity mismo, eh, nagbuo ng isang frat alliance on the basis ng anti-Marcos. At yung mga uh, fraternity na pro-Marcos, talagang kinalaban sa eleksyon, kahit sa campus, kahit sa rumble. You know? <laughs> I mean, uh, yun ang ibig sabihin. Okay. Iba, iba yung usapin na meron silang ginawa and uh, it happened in UP. Okay. Iba, iba yun. yung usapin na ang authorities ng UP ang hindi mag-aalaw. Iba kasi yung proteste. The University uh, Council, the, the faculty, wala kong problema dun eh. Okay. We took a stand at the time. Ano? At in fact, sa maraming mga okasyon, UP nag-stood out o kaya nasa unahan. Uh-huh. But then that's different dun sa question na meron bang policy ang UP not to allow anybody na gumamit. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, iba yun, iba yun. Yes, please. I think we'll see na over the 100 years plus of the, of the university, uh, UP and whoever its leader was has always had to negotiate the very difficult line between resistance and collaboration with, uh, with the powers that be, which control its budget. So, so uh, and, and that much of this negotiation is also carried on with, with UP alumni on the other side. Uh, that this is the degree to which UP and its gra- uh, alumni have permeated our national life. Kaya lang naman posible itong mga negosyasyon na to kasi may mga taga-UP rin sa kabila na nakakaintindi ng kultura na pinanggagalingan uh, nila. Ano, kahit, na, kahit na nagbago na siguro yung paniniwala nila, alam nila, I think na-appreciate din nila yung kahalagahan ng isang pamantasan na nire-respeto mo ang kalayaan nito na mag-aral at magturo sa isang paraan na na siya'y nakakaintindi. And, and I think that despite the many assaults on, on academic freedom, uh, people generally understand the value of maintaining such uh, an institution mm-hmm. and its autonomy to some degree, although that autonomy is always under threat. Very good. Yeah. Maganda to. Maganda to ah. So, very interesting. Yeah. Can we move forward? Sabi kasi ni Aimee, uh, nag-move on na yung mga millennials. Can we really move on? Well, we can only move on if there's really justice uh, for the victims of martial law. Uh, Trajano, Barros, Hilaw, everybody. So, I wonder where Aimee Marcos gets the notion that the millennials have already moved on. Maybe she thinks that we've already forgotten because martial law from 1972 to 1986 happened decades ago. But I don't think that's the case. And I guess we also need to clarify uh, that as far as admissions are concerned, we are very, very accommodating to everybody. In my 17 years of teaching, I recall having a Marcos as a student. And she was never, ever discriminated. I don't think she was ever discriminated by me or any of the faculty. So we have that degree of tolerance. But it's a different matter altogether when you have an organized group, like Kapataang Barangay, wanting to impose their, I'm using the word impose, wanting to impose their presence uh, in the university on the pretext that we've already moved on and that everything's okay. So magkaiba po yung dalawang yon. Now, with regard to culture of protest, we have to remember that Okay, uh, Mon Casiple makes a good point that UP started out as basically a training ground for colonial bureaucrats. T- tama po yon. In fact, I can even argue the Philippine Collegian started as varsity news and it was very, very apolitical. Yung headlines niya, ano yung latest fashion sa university halimbawa. Very, very apolitical. But there is that element of evolution. With the introduction of liberal education in the university, people have become more progressive in terms of thinking, uh, there was a free exchange of ideas, but in terms of na- discourse, yung discourse po talaga sa universidad ay mas progresibo at mas critical. Okay? I'm not pointing to sp- specific political spectrum. 
or specific political ideology. But the ideology that's carried by the university for the most part is really within the pretext of serving the people. So may natural bias ka for the poor and, and, and the impoverished. Okay. So it is in that context that we try to that we should try to analyze uh, up to what extent can we be as tolerant to the reprehensible ideologies and people uh -huh. uh, we know of. Very Yan good. Napakaganda nun. Well, the, the real kind of moving on that we have to do has to happen on a more basic level, which uh -huh. is that we move on from a political system which is lorded over by, by rich and powerful people. Uh, yan ang, yan ang pag move on. Yung matauhan tayo na bumoto naman tayo sa mga taong hindi lang mayaman at makapangyarihan at popular. Uh, yan ang totoong edukasyon ng, ng butante natin. Yan ang pag-move on talaga. Okay. By the way, I'd like to acknowledge Ninochka Roska is watching us from the United States. And my classmates during the elementary grades, Lilia Tibayan Avante and Teresita Ranges are watching. Thank you to Veritas Asia Filipino Service for putting this live on stream. So, yung ating kaibigang si Malu Mariano na nasa Estados Unidos who may have questions Pakipadala lang no, inyong tanong, we will ask our resource persons today. Now, uh, yung bang politika hindi natin maiihiwalay sa akadim, whether we like it or not, no? <laughs> Dahil alam ko, yung student council kumisan, eh, dyan, babayaran na kumisan dyan. Sige, titreat kita dyan, kain tayo, basta iboto mo ko. Yung ba, sa eskwelahan pa lang. Babalikan mo yung, sa UP ito particular. Sige no? nga, sige nga. Yung microcosm. In fact, uh, ang, ang mas uh, lighter uh, description siguro, there is such a thing as Republic of the University of the Philippines. Republic <laughs> of the University <laughs> of the Philippines. Lumilitaw yan from time to time. Halimbawa, pag lumusob yung pulis sa UP, bawal yan kasi may pulis ang UP. May agreement pa ngayon with the Quezon City Police na hindi basta-basta kumasok. Kahit nung panahon ng uh, Nina Irene at nandun doon, magkaroon pa ng usapan dyan na mm -hmm. ah, hanggang saan papasok yung PSG, etc. Mm -hmm. Kasi yung, uh, I think one of the major ano, na, sa culture sa UP is that you can speak out on anything actually, kung yun lang, uh, all kinds of ideas and groups nandun dyan, ano. But then that's different from the community taking a stand on certain issues. Uh -huh. UP is not uh, an ivory tower. Dapat ma-realize yan din ng uh, mga uh, nanonood sa UP. Uh -huh. UP is part of the Philippine society. And it cannot escape from that. Okay. So academic freedom, mm -hmm. it has to be understood not in its abstract uh, anew. No? Yeah. Uh, dapat tingnan mo yan in the concrete conditions na kinapaluban niya. Okay. At Time yes. of dictatorship, taking a stand is academic freedom. Okay. Very good. Yes, sir. And, and speaking of academic freedom, let's not forget that this, this is enshrined in the Constitution in, in the Charter of UP. From the very beginning na, ng establishment ng UP, issue na yung academic freedom, which again is guaranteed for all uh, higher education institutions. Ano? Pero kami lang yata sa UP ang talagang nasa forefront na pagde-defend nito. Because over the past hundred years, we have had to bear the brunt of challenges to it, both both within and, and without. Yeah. And very often it has been challenged by, by political forces uh, outside the university. Mm -hmm. ano? uh, and there are many ways of exerting those, 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 those forces. Uh, academic freedom has to do with, with deciding what to teach, what to study, uh, and, and so on. And, and, and it's premised on the competence of, of academics uh, as being the experts in their own field. Uh -huh. Therefore, when scientist ka, hindi pwedeng makialam ang isang senador o general doon sa science ng ginagawa mo. I mean, of course they can question it. That's, that's part of, 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 of this course. Pero ikaw ang eksperto doon sa linya mo. At wala makapagsasabi sa'yo maski obispo na, uy, mali yan o, o, o bawal yan. 
Kaya po okay. ako nagtuturo sa UP at hindi sa ibang pamantasan sapagkat may academic freedom kami doon. Okay, yes please. Before I shift to some other topics. Yeah. It's good that he mentioned academic freedom because in other universities, uh, sometimes it's very exclusivist. One professor whom I shall not name anymore outside UP says that academic freedom is only limited to tenured faculty members and if he or she has a PhD. <laughs> Dalawa. Ang, dalawa yung, ano, yung pam pamantayan. But in UP, even if you're a lecturer or an, a newly hired instructor, you are already guaranteed academic freedom in the sense that uh, hindi papakelaman kung paano mo ituturo ang kurso na in sa sa'yo. And in fact, the freedom is so liberal that you can choose your schedule and even to some extent choose the subjects that you want to teach. Okay? Although that doesn't really happen in all departments, but, some, but in some departments it does. So these are the realities uh, at the university. And unlike sectarian institutions, I won't mention anymore the name of a certain pontifical university. You're saying uh, it's UST. It's no the only one. Oh, sige na nga. It's the only pontifical Sorry, university. Sorry, Royal Pontifical. Uh, but, that's, uh, yeah, as mentioned same. by Professor Jose David Lapus. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> so unlike other religious universities, we don't limit in terms of religion. And in fact, uh, it is, I think, only in the university where our protocol clearly states that you're not allowed to hold prayers before and after class. Okay? Why are we not allowed? Because we don't want to impose Okay, if you want to pray, you can pray on your own and you pray silently. Okay, so that's how academic freedom has been, you know, okay. uh, expanded uh, through uh -huh. the years in the university. Yeah, Yun but, lang po. but definitely, marami nagdarasal sa UP, lalo na pag exams. Opo, uh, uh, kaya uh, nga may simba. And actually, I should add, yung pag-build ng Church of the Risen Lord at saka ng parish, it also became an issue for a time when it was being built. But right now, we become somewhat tolerant kasi meron ng prayer room sa, ng mga Muslim dun sa Islamic studies, if I'm not mistaken. So we're quite open now when it comes uh -huh. to religions. Pero why is it that UP is a standout because of the Lantern Parade and the annual APO event? Uh, oblation Run. Yung Oblation Run sa aming panahon nagsimula yan. Kasama ka sa tumakbo? Hindi, Opsilon yan eh. Ah, okay. Oh. Apo, apo pala, apo, apo pala. Meaning, uh, yun yung time na nagsisimula na rin ng mga bumalik yung mga eleksyon, etc. And you have to stand out, I think. Uh, it, it, it's not a protest. In fact, uh, pro-Marcos nga yung positioning nila within the campus. Ano? Uh -huh. I think it was a promotion for a play Pro, yeah, that APO uh, was uh, trying to organize. But later on, it took on, as you correctly naging, noted, naging a political thing. Naging, naging political na uh, yung uh, oblation uh, run. It, through the years, nagbabago-bago. Depende kung ano yung planning nila at anong objective nila. Pero it's not really a part ng uh, protest movement at the time. Uh, okay. Or even in defense of Marcos at the time. Walang ganong... Walang ganon. Uh, oh, hindi, hindi political. Lang Mukhang well origin. attended, well covered. Uh, Parte ata ng culture ng UP yun. Gusto makita. Ah, uh, okay. Eh, paano kasi marami rin nagbabantay dun sa oblation na matanggal yung ano, dahon. <laughs> eh, hindi naman malaglaglaglag yung dahon, kaya okay lang. Anyway. Yung, yung, yung dahon yeah. na yan, kagagawan ni Presidente Jorge Bocobo yan. Kasi yung original na estatwa, wala namang dahon yan. Pero medyo konservatibo si Bokobo, kaya nag-insist siya na malagyan ng dahon doon. At yun naman ang hinihintay na bumagsak, no? ilan natin mga kababayan. Pero yung Lantern Parade, what about culture in UP? Uh, dahil ang sabi, uh, we're training students. Ito, uh, I don't know, napupun na kasi na merong malaking divide between humanities and social sciences and natural sciences. Uh, and we breed bean counters na wala ng puso. How do you look at it? Medyo biased kasi ka kami dahil pareho kaming nasa arts and humanities cluster. But, uh, yeah, uh, it's a valid notion na parang mas nagbibigay ng emphasis sa STEM o yung science, technology, engineering, and mathematics courses. It's not just in UP, but in other universities. Uh, more scholarships, more grants are given to them. Uh, and even in UP, you would notice much of the budget, well, not really much of the budget, but a substantial part of the budget goes to the sciences, as may be seen in the College of Science complex. Yung mga department naging institutes na, so they have their own buildings. Engineering has the same case. So 
we have that uh, dilemma right now. And uh, of course, uh, we made, uh, VP Dalisa and I may differ on this opinion, but it may have to do with the reforms being done on the general education program. Uh, recently, we reduced the number of units from the current uh, 45 units to a minimum of 21. So, pwede ng 21 to 45 units yung mga kurso depending on what the academic uh, college academic units want. So once you opt to reduce the GE subjects, all the more that there would be the decrease in the puso part. Kasi baka, yun na nga, kokonti na nga, uh, yung kokonti na nga yung mga kurso, tapos yung mga arts and humanities literature, for example, uh -huh. uh, VP Dalisa is an expert when it comes to literature, for example, uh, parang nababawasan na yung pagkakataon na maituro ito mga bagay na ito. Okay. Yung po bang literature ng mga trolls may galing ba sa UP noon? <laughs> I'm sure marami naman dyan sa mga trolls, mga taga-UP rin siguro yan. Ah, okay. ano? Pero to, to address uh, Danny's point, uh, th that's very true that there is a general concern about uh, these changes in our general education program which people fear could result in students, for example, who know or appreciate very little of their history and, 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 and language. And this is all part of a process happening globally where universities are being forced to compromise their curricula to adjust to economic pressures. Halimbawa, dati five years yung engineering, kailangan ibaba mo na sa four years. Hindi ko rin mabiblame naman yung College of Engineering namin for responding to that pressure. You know? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, because I'm sure they, 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 they feel it, uh, although you can also argue that UP, w when you get right down to figures, UP is an engineering school. Yes. Uh, no? At least the Liman, because the majority of uh, engineering talaga. So uh, that also probably explains why they may seem to have a disproportionate share of, of resources. Okay. Coming na sa arts, kukunti lang kami, pero maingay kami. No, and very, we're very assertive. And this is again why I argue, uh, to get back to academic freedom, you need that kind of, of freedom to be able to be creative. Okay. Because that, that's requisite to, to, to creativity. And we're actually world class in this, in this respect. Okay. Along with the best of engineers, we produce some of the world's best artists. Because unlike our neighbors, like you know, in Southeast Asia, in ASEAN, we are the freest and the most assertive uh, of, of people and, uh, and of artists, especially. Okay. Now, this may be classified. What is this information I got? Now, over the past couple of years, maraming nag-suicide sa UP ng mga estudyante. Is there truth to what I heard? I, I would think that there is some truth to that. We have not compiled the statistics, but anecdotally we have heard of many cases of, of students going as far as to commit uh, suicide for a variety of reasons. Tinitinan po natin ito. And again, hindi lang naman ito confined sa UP. Alam ko nangyayari, my colleagues in your university have also told me as much. Ano? At uh, 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 ang suspecha ko dito, parang generational na, ano ito eh, na, na, na problema. Kasi hindi ko lang alam, again, noong panahon namin, noong, uh, noong, noong panahon kasi namin, there, we were aware of things larger than us. But the world today for these young kids has gotten much narrower despite the internet you th you'd think that they were connected to everyone else, but actually they're more isolated uh -huh. in, their, in their shells. So when there's a problem, they feel that they're left to fend for themselves. Okay. Eh kami nun, pinaglalaban namin, mga, ando kami sa labas, hindi kami takot na mamatay. Makipag, makipaglaban for, for larger causes. Itong mga causes na to, eh medyo nag-dissipate na sa karamihan ng mga, uh -huh. ng mga bata. Okay. Kung basa mo dyan, Danny. Yeah. Uh, I think... It's true. It happens in other universities as well. Uh, I think uh, Cristel Tejada's case, uh, the student from UP Manila, would be the, more publi the most publicized. And it had something to... Of course, there's a debate as to the real reason for her suicide. Sabi ng iba, love, tra uh, ano, may love angle, family problem. But uh, 
what you cannot deny is that she is hard struck by uh, not being admitted uh, by being disqualified from uh, enrolling in the university because of financial problems. Kasi nareklasi, dati may socialized tuition pa noon, uh, nareklasify siya in such a way that she would need to shell, uh, in such a way that her tuition subsidy, yung stipend niya, nawala. Okay? So, nam problema. Okay? Eh, ito yung batang kumakain lang ng candy during lunchtime para ma-assuage yung kanyang hunger. Nakatira siya sa Tayuman where I used to live for sev for five years uh, when I was younger. And I know the distance between UP Manila and Tayuman, pero yon nilalakad niya. Okay? Kasi wala siyang pang LRT or wala siyang pamasahe sa jeep. Okay? So, that is a real problem. And I think uh, the names ex escape me right now, but that also happened in Bicol University. Uh, as well as in other universities. Now, of course, there are also, as BP Dalis, I mentioned, isolated cases of being pressured, okay, academically. Uh, I don't want to mention it, but uh, there's a constituent university at UP where uh, a student has allegedly committed suicide kasi bumagsak siya sa midterms niya, okay? But these are mainly isolated cases, I want to say. But the systemic problem of the high cost of tuition, despite the free education that's provided uh, under the Duterte administration uh, would be the root cause. Because let's be clear here, what's being subsidized by the, by the Duterte administration is just simply tuition and other fees. Pero yung actual cost of living, the subsidies, the allowances, uh, you need to look for a scholarship program or yes. you need to fend for yourselves or to work uh, as a student. Kaya minsan the pressure could be so staggering. Okay. Some time ago, I was in uh, a university in Cavite. I talked to the president, private to. Sabi ko, sa bawat isang daang nag enroll sa inyo, ilan yung nawawala every year? Sabi niya, 10%. So, kung hanggang sa maka-graduate, so, malaki rin yung bagay na nawala. No? Sabi ko, anong factor? E, bukod sa pera, merong absence ng magulang. Uh, sabi niya, kung umalis ang nanay, umalis ang tatay, yung pera pinapadala sa kamag-anak. O sa lolo, o sa lola, sa tito, o sa tita, na kuminsan, hindi naman ginagastos dun sa batang dapat tustusan. So, I don't know whether this has also been uh, a case in universities like UP. Actually, lahat kasi social na usapin yan eh pagdating sa fenomeno ng OFW, ano? uh, marami ng studies yata ginawa dyan at uh, lumilitaw yung mga psychological, social problems dyan, mga psychosocial. Talagang isang malaking usapin yan. Hindi lamang sa, I think, sa UP or uh, any university, pero sa lipunan mismo. Kasi yung sitwasyon na wala kang tatay, walang nanay, pero may pera ka. Ang nangyayari, hindi naman siguro sa lahat ng case, pero nagkakaroon ng access to the money either yung bata o yung uh, mga kamag-anak. Malamang nag-aaway na yan. Broken families usually isang uh, undesirable result nung ganyan. Ano? Kaya hindi na yan usapin lang ng university coping with it eh, kasi outside ng university yan. Eh. There has to be an approach na medyo comprehensive. Hindi rin yan DSWD. Yeah. In fact, you have to, to go to the root cause niya, no? no? Uh, ako, I would support natin baba. Yung magkaroon talaga ng program to bring them back. Okay. So, you have so, to create the environment. So, what ano? you're saying, uh, Mon, is kulang yung galit ni Pangulong Duterte sa mga nasa droga dahil napapahamak yung anak ng OFW. Actually, kung tingnan mo yung anti-drug campaign niya sa... Uh, sa kanyang kampanya before. Related yan sa pagpapabalik ng OFW eh. Meron na ba programa para bumalik yung mga yon? Well, hindi yung direkta, no? Kasi ang problem dito, medyo malalim eh. Kaya lumalabas kasi nga, walang jobs. Walang trabaho rito. O, ma mahina yung uh, sweldo. And to create that job to develop the economy dito. Meaning, bibigyan mo ng comparative na sweldo o opportunities. Mm -hmm. Hanggat hindi mangyayari yan, the natural na direksyon ng mga mga kababayan nating nagtatrabaho ay lumabas. Okay. Na, uh, nabanggit mo yan. Eh, kahit ayaw nang mag, uh, bumalik ng mga magulang, ng mga batang to, 
yung Department of Foreign Affairs came out with a statement na baka pauwiin yung mga isang libo walong daang Pilipino sa Tripoli dahil merong factional fighting. So sabi, prepare kayo for eventual uh, return to the Philippines. And that's another problem. Pag uwi nila rito, anong trabaho? Kung gusto mo ng fearless forecast, uh -huh. hindi uwi yung mga yun. Magkahanap ng parang yun, pumunta sa ibang bansa. Ang tendency, kahit sa Iraq o sa yung mga war-torn countries, ano, binugbawal na nga nating pumunta, nakalagay pa yun sa passport, ano, pero magkahanap ng paraan yan kung may trabahong involved. Ano. Yeah, I, I heard it may gulo sa Lebanon. Sabi ng mga Pilipino, pag umuwi ho kami ron, mamamatay kami ng dilat dito, at least may laban. Yung term na kapit sa patalim, nag apply dito actually. Okay, pero... Uh, Mr. Vice President, binanggit ni Dr. Cornelio Banaag sa forum ding ito, sa lamesa ring ito, na isang dahilan bakit nagkaka-suicide sa mga bata ay eh yung stress sa eskwela, pamilya, at social media. How do you look at it? Eh, ganun nga yung mga dahilan. Doon sa mga ilang kaso na naimbestiga namin, ganun ng lumilitaw na dahilan. Iisipin natin parang maliliit lang na kaso ito sa atin pero sa kanila, siyempre, malaking bagay yan. Mga break-up sa, sa girlfriend, uh, uh, hindi nakapagtapos on time, you know, mga parating na exam, patong-patong na stress yan. Nahihirapan sila mag-cope sa mga ganitong klaseng uh, pressure. At uh, may mga ilang kaso nga rin kaming nasisilip na ganyan at pinag-aaralan. In fact, nagkaroon kami ng... Uh, Uh, isang summit ano, on, on, uh, on tinatawag namin emotional resilience kasi importante magkaroon nito yung mga bata eh para, para pag-aralan para pag kung paano natin haharapin yan. No? Uh, hindi lang namin pinapublicize itong mga kasong ito sapagkat nasa protocol yan ng World Health Organization. No names. Na, at hindi mo, hindi mo no, hindi, bukod sa no names ay you cannot discuss the details of these cases because Because apparently it leads to copycat, uh, ano, uh, yeah. suicides. Yes. Pero hindi ibig sabihin niya na di namin alam ito mga pangyayari. In fact, ang magtataka ako, uh, marami dito sa mga, sa mga tumutuloy na mag-suicide ay mga, mga, mga uh, graduate pa ng Philippine Science High School. May eskwela ko. Ano, mga matatalinong tao ito. Hindi ito dahil sa bagsak sila ano kundi enormous siguro yung pressure sa kanila yung expectation sa kanila at hindi nila ma-meet yon no wonder president Duterte is very much well and alive no uh, no comment <laughs> eh, sabi niya average student siya oh, yun. So, ah, ganyan, mas ganyan relax, mas relax siya sa pananaw niya sa buhay you know yeah, okay yes please what's your take on it well eh, Philippine science sa kanoko kaya kaya <laughs> <laughs> yung <laughs> May mga kaklase din ako na BAT-72. Ang isang luminitaw talaga dyan yung you place a student in a environment na bago sa kanya. UP, ganyan din. Pumasok ka, taga-provincia ka. No? You will come under pressure. Pag wala yung coping mechanism, pati yung social mechanisms, uh -huh. Magkakaproblema ka kasi usually alienation ng, ang kadaratan mo. Okay. Kaya sa UP, malaking usapin yung sumama ka sa barsitarian group. Yung mga taga-region mo. Uh, usually, malakas ang uh, support to each other dyan. Ang fraternity, sorority, yan din ang attraction yan. Kasi kung nasa classroom ka lang, ang classroom style natin ngayon, kanya-kanya eh. And in fact, the more na develop yung academic na program, ang tendency niya, nabawa, yung meron ng mga off-classroom na ngayon na teaching, di ba? Ang kahawak mo na lang, eh, yung computer. Yeah. Uh, pupunta ka na lang for exam. Ibig hmm. e, sabihin, on your own ka. Ngayon, saan yung uh, support mechanism dyan? Wala. Lalo pa kung pamilya mo, eh, nasa abroad. Uh -huh. uh, yung stresses ng today's students, I think, uh, mas matindi kaysa dati. Okay. No, kasi panahon namin, pwede ka pa magsaranggola eh. Oh, eh. Oh, pwede ka mamitas na mangga kung saan. Di ba? Makopa, balimbing, sa Bicol. <laughs> eh, ngayon, kaya kailangan may pera ka na pambili ng bagong iPhone. Ganyan, ang mga pressure na ano, ng mga bata. 
At kulang tayo, isa pa, kulang tayo sa mga trained na psychologists. Ano? Kasi ang, ang, I think ang global standard dyan is one psychologist for 1,000 students. Malayo pa tayo sa But don't kanyang. you think uh, kailangan ng maayos at matinong role model sa eskwelahan? Ba makita ng mga bata o sa lipunan para yun ang kanilang ma-emulate? I think role models are important, but uh, what we need to also stress here is that stress can be personal and systemic at the yes. same time. Yes. So we should also remember that whatever we feel at the personal level, it's re a, a reflection of what's happening outside. Mm -hmm. Yung stress sa traffic, it's not just simply a personal no. experience we're going through, it's quite systemic. So we stress sa politika natin. Exactly, stress sa politika. Oh, academic so, discussion tayo. Ha? Kaya, nga, oh, kaya nga, so tama rin yung sinabi na mas malala ang sitwasyon ngayon kumpara nung panahon natin kasi mas ano na eh, parang na-aggravate na eh. Yung, yeah. yung may problema na tayo nung panahon natin pero hindi na naresolbahan at mas lumala pa. Iba so yung problema what, ngayon. Yeah, oh, ibang level yung problema ngayon. So, at saka may social media factor then which in the 80s and 70s and 60s wala. So that's why aside from emotional resilience workshops or training, I think it's necessary coming from the College of Mass Communication to come up with a really good media literacy program uh, not just for teachers, high school teachers, but also for students. Uh, okay. Even our, we should target even our own UP students. Very good. Mm -hmm. Maganda yan. Dahil sabi, pagdating naman nila sa UP, na-form na yan batang yan eh. So, well, matanda na yan. Eh. Yun yung problema kasi with the K-12 pro, we are assuming that the K-12 program is effective really as it is designed. Okay? On paper, you may argue that it's good. Uh, I would counter otherwise, but that's, this is neither the time nor place for that. But what I can say is that Right now, uh, the K-12 program has not yet proven its worth as to whether or not it would justify either the reduction of, of units in the general education program and how well-rounded you are. Because as it is right now, one argument against K-12 is that it doesn't really prepare you for college life. It prepares you for early employment. With, a, with its focus more on yeah. skills rather than knowledge. So okay. that is the great disconnect. When they enter the university under the K-12 program, which is designed for employment, eh, ang habol ng university pursuit of knowledge. Eh. So yeah. there's that disconnect. Dr. Butch, let me ask you, ilan yung aplikante sa UPCAT every year? Well, uh, nagbabago nga yan. Dati-dati, mga 80 mil lang ang nag a, a few years ago. Last year, it was 103,000. This year, it was 167,000. Really? Ilan yung yes. matatanggap? Uh, unang unay, dyan sa 167,000 na yan, for various reasons, mababawasan pa yan, sabihin mo ng 150,000 ang kukuha. Ang, ang recent na historical ratio natin ng nakakapasok uh, o, o nag-qualify eventually sa UP ay 17%. So, kwentahin mo yung 17% ng mga 150,000. Ano? Uh, uh, kasi ang, ang nagdedetermine din naman dyan ay yung carrying capacity ng ating mga of constituent university. Aha, uh -huh, maganda ito. So, we'll have a different session for that. Uh, pwede bang other topics? Uh, political analysis eh. Ano ro ba? Sabi ni Jeg Obido ng Legaspi City, nag-message, Ano ro impact ng Trillanes case sa lipunan ngayon? Yeah. Yan, yan. Well, I'm not surprised ano, kung yung ano. In fact, tingin ko may mangyayari pa after niyan. Ang context kasi, and uh, this has been uh, the, the situation since nung nanalo si Presidente Duterte, a political battle has never ended. Yan, simula sa eleksyon siguro, pero nagtuloy-tuloy yan. Uh, yung mga events like yung... Uh, kay Chief Justice Sereno, yung kay Senator uh, Laila De Lima, uh, at iba-iba uh, pa na related ng mga, ano, eh, part yun nung uh, labanan. Eh. And the other side naman, yung ICC ka, na kaso, yung mga every issue, naging political issue. Mula inflation, anti-drug, yun na may nagkakaroon ng political color. Ang ibig lang sabihin nito, Mi ang masama na sitwasyon na lumilitaw ay yung tuloy-tuloy ang bakbakan at hindi na hinto. Ngayon, mga legal na mga usapin tinatamaan na ngayon, ibig sabihin yung rules, yung rules of the game na sinasabi sa politika, mula konstitusyon hanggang mga batas, 
ay bahagi na nung repertoire no? <laughs> ano, may kanya-kanyang interpretasyon ng konstitusyon ito ngayon, may bago tayong pinagawa yan o may ibig sabihin ng revocation ng amnesty at may iba-ibang uh, opinion niya kung narinig nyo si Secretary uh, Guevara may sarili may sarili din yung kabilang side at the end of the day, pupunta sa Supreme Court ang uh, Supreme Court, malamang kung anong desisyon nila controversial din Yan ang masama na sitwasyon ngayon kasi walang bigayan dito eh. Ito yung sitwasyon na kapag hindi mo na panghawakan, may easily get out of ban. Okay. Very good. Let's look forward. What should be done to keep academic freedom and for ideologies to flourish? Because eventually, this will determine the future of every society. Professor. Uh, just like any other basic freedoms that we have, we have to continuously fight yes. for it, uh, especially when it's being threatened. Uh, of course, I'm not saying that there's a real threat to academic freedom right now, but uh, if you look at certain instances of uh, repression uh, being perpetuated by the Duterte administration, there's a distinct possibility that it might happen. So we need to be vigilant and we have to ensure that uh, student rights and welfare will be upheld and that uh, the faculty would remain free in terms of what they want to teach uh, to the students, uh, provided that uh, it is assumed that with the hiring of these faculty members, they have a certain level of expertise mm -hmm. and standing in the sector that they belong to so that they would be in a position to really shape uh, and mold uh, the young minds. Yan lang po. Salamat. Thank you. Yes. Sa akin, simple lang. Ang university, may, may mission yan sa lipunan natin. Tagahubog ng mga isip ng mga kabataan para sa eventual productive uh, life ano, after school. Ano man yung mga posisyon nila sa buhay o sa mga ideological or political ideas, eh bahagi ng buhay yun eh. eh ang, ang tingin ko, ang... Uh, Ang, ang academic freedom dito provides that environment ano, na mag-develop ka sa potential mo, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Ang ano lang siguro dito, ang constraint is that the administration should actually foster that rather than restrict it. Fostering, of course, requires rules. Ano? Pero yung rules na hindi nagre-restrict nung ganong uh, freedom. Mm -hmm. Ito yung palaging problem eh. Ako tingin ko given na yan na palaging may awa yan. In the okay. sense na hindi lang conflict of ideas, even positioning sa mga issues. Expected yan sa university. Uh -huh. Not only UP, but I think it should be in all universities. Kasi otherwise you won't develop eh. Yeah. If you try to uh, impose ideas, no? magre-rebel lang yung ayaw niyan. Yeah. Ang masano dyan is you develop the capability na magkaroon ng independent thinking and then work it out. Mm -hmm. In that sense, piniprepare mo yung estudyante for their life outside the university. Very good. Maganda yan. Yes, please. Well, we should appreciate and support our intellect as an important resource. And we Filipinos have a lot of this. And I hope that whatever our political persuasions may be, uh, that our people and our leaders uh, will appreciate the importance of, of academic freedom as a prerequisite to developing the Filipino mind. And this leads to more creativity, this leads to more innovation, this leads to more productivity. And you need freedom again as a prerequisite for these things uh, to flourish. Kahit ano pa mo, kahit ano pa po ang ating uh, political na paniniwala, mas mapapakinabangan mo ang ating uh, kaalaman, ang ating pamantasan, kung bibigyan mo ng kalayaan ang ating mag-aaral at mga guro na gawin ang alam nilang gawin mm -hmm. ng hindi natin pinakikialaman dahil sa Politika o, o kapangyarihan. Trust our teachers, trust our students to find their way to a better future. Okay. We'd like to open the floor to our colleagues from the media who may have questions despite the limited time. 
questions? Questions from the media? Yes, please. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Um, Stephen Hawking said yes. that if we know what, who, who we are mm -hmm. and what is the purpose, mm -hmm. why we are here, then we will have the ultimate knowledge which, because we will have the mind of God. Mm -hmm. So in all our, uh, I think, because he is also known as an atheist, but with that okay. big statement, he is never an atheist. Okay. So if we if we think of that when we teach our young people, okay. I think it will not go. Okay. Farther. Reactions, please. Well, I, let let me just add, uh, also in kind of indirect reference to that, that our business is not only to to generate knowledge, but hopefully knowledge with values, that we understand that our, even our research, our teaching has, uh, has moral consequences. At importante po yan, even in an atmosphere of academic freedom, that, that we remember the, the, again, the human implications of, of what we do. Yes, please. Go ahead. I'm a huge proponent of foreign exchange students. Yes. In the university system in the Philippines, right. how many foreign exchange students come in and how many of your students have the ability to go to other mm -hmm. countries? Uh, at the moment, we have very few uh, foreign students at the undergraduate level, and there's a political reason for that because every foreign student who comes in here uh, kicks out a Filipino student whom we are obliged by law to, uh, to, support, to give priority to. At the graduate level, however, we are much more open. I don't have the, the, the figures right now, but, it's, uh, but, but I would say probably uh, maybe in the couple of hundreds at least. Uh, probably smaller than that. Uh, we have, many, we have many Korean students, for example, who are here not necessarily for, for full-fledged uh, degrees or, or master degrees, but for, uh, for short-term English courses, which they find cheaper to do here than, than, than to go to the United States or, or to the UK. But we do have uh, uh, an international center, for example, which we are currently refurbishing. Uh, to uh, to accommodate uh, uh, foreign students, do you have any other insights on this? Danny? Yes, uh, we have a specific office that uh, caters that, that focuses on uh, exchange programs. So, given that the the at the university level that we have an office for that, it means that uh, yes, it it could run by a couple of hundreds in terms of those coming in. But for those coming out, uh, these are what we call uh, trans well cross-registrant, but uh, at a different country. Uh, for example, I have a former student of mine who was funded by Fulbright. Uh, yes. Her graduation was delayed for one year because she studied in the US. So her graduation, her, the delay in graduation is for a good thing, mm -hmm. as far as she's concerned. So, things, so it could run also for a couple of hundred yes. also. And that would partly explain why uh, the university has that globalist attitude in terms of, for example, making certain adjustments to ensure that there will be more exchanges mm -hmm. as far as the students are concerned and the faculty. So it's a, it's, an issue, it's a very touchy debate as to whether or not you should shift the calendar from previously June would be the start of the first semester, now it's August, so that it would be more or less synchronized with the Western world, okay, North America and Europe. So it's a touchy debate. but. I should add also that there are also several cases of faculty members doing exchange programs uh, going on, uh, what do you call that term? Uh, anyway, uh, teaching for one year, for example, or for two years uh, at another country and then coming back. So there are also cases like that. And we, I myself uh, have had the, ex had had the experience of teaching in Korea, for example, for one year way back in 2009. Uh, because the university somehow tolerates that kind of uh, uh, arrangement. Yeah, uh -huh. Because it would be good for 
Uh, because whatever you learn there, you could mm -hmm. apply here. So we tolerate that. Thank we, you. We have, we have a very vigorous program uh, as far as our resources allow, sending uh, people out, whether again for short-term courses or for uh, to get the graduate degrees, especially, especially now we're sending people out to, to take their PhDs. And the, the, I think the important shift from the, from uh, over the past 20 years has been to move away from our traditional relationships with American academia. Like I, I was a Fulbrighter myself. Uh, I did my, my MA and PhD in the States. But our younger uh, doctoral students are now moving on to Singapore, to Taiwan, to Australia, uh, and I think it's a good, it's a good development. Uh, it, it diversifies uh, our stock of knowledge, and, uh, and over time this will, I, I think, also produce certain cultural shifts in, in the thinking of our, of our faculty. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Please identify yourself. So, hindi pwedeng bawiin dahil ab inisyo. Well, that's uh, mga legal arguments na yan. Ano? May sariling tingin ng uh, administrasyon and that's the position. Meron ding tingin yung opposition at saka iba pang mga legal uh, personalities natin. Ako, uh, sabi ko nga, it will end up in the Supreme Court. Yung legal side of it. Pero yung political side is that uh, sabi ko nga, hindi ako surprised kasi bakbakan na nagbakbakan, wala pa nun eh. And I'm not uh, uh, thinking or expecting na dyan nahihinto. Kasi sa nature na, na ngayon ng labanan ay walang hangganan. In fact, if you recall, a few weeks back, uh, President Duterte himself was saying na may CIA plan laban sa kanya. Uh, in may, accus may accusation din siya ng destabilization or even ouster. No? Uh, I don't know kung anong pinagbabatayan niya dyan. Uh, I, I would assume na meron siyang uh, sariling analysis. And that, ang, for me, you know, ang implications lang nun is that uh, there is that uh, potential for that situation to get out of hand, meaning constitutional frame. Mahilig tayo ng mga extra-constitutional eh. And uh, we're already there in the sense na... Would you say that this is yeah. a trigger to more interesting things to come? It may. Uh, of course, politically, election is the center ng political life ng bansa. No? And uh, usually, even if you want to do extra-constitutional, pag pumasok na yung election season, we haven't had the experience na sumasabay ang mga ganyan. So the window actually is uh, very narrow na. Kasi next month, ano na eh, filing with candidacy. Yung mga tao, nandun na yung atensyon. Kaya kung meron kang uh, issue with the administration, use for its directoral uh, arena. Ang, ano. Pero I'm not saying na ganun nga mangyari. The point is, may potential yung situation. Yeah. Uh, may potential yung situation. Okay. I'm sorry, we're pressed. Oh, Pahabol. Sige, Pahabol. Okay, bro, uh, regarding about uh, academic, no? mm -hmm. quality of education, uh, this uh, scholarship program, could you please uh, give us insight what is the required uh, qualification? Mga scholarships, scholarships. Iba-iba uh, po ang requirements sa scholarship. And now that we, for example, for it's not just UP, but for the other state universities and colleges that now enjoy free tuition, the trend right now among various school administrators is to reformat the scholarship program in such a way that it would provide own for just simply the subsidy or cost of living allowances, book allowances, thesis fund, or whatever other allowances that are not allowed uh, to be collected by the CHED. Kasi ang ginagawa po talaga riyan, ang um, university, halimbawa, in the case of UP, we try to compute the actual cost of education dun sa 
mga estudyante na nag enroll hindi nagbabayad ang estudyante pero dun sa actual cost niya, for example, in our case, it's 1,500 per unit along with other miscellaneous fees. Tapos, opo, yun po yung single. Kasi wala nang, wala nang socialized tuition, so the highest bracket is assigned uh, for all the students. So, yun yung sisingilin dun sa CHED naman. So, parang i reimburse kami ng CHED. Mm -hmm. So, that's, so, there are also scholarship programs that would provide for cost of living allowances. But I should admit, in the case of Diliman, uh, perhaps uh, VP Dalisay could uh, also give other information on other constituent universities. We have very limited scholarships. Uh, and usually, the scholarships are given to the more quote-unquote popular courses. For example, in journalism, we don't have much of a problem because I can cite at least three scholarship programs that can be given to three to five students, okay, at, at any given time. So that's not a problem. But for other less popular courses, I won't mention which, uh, hindi masyadong available yung scholarship programs uh -huh. or opportunities para sa kanila. Okay. Ah, yung K-12. Uh -huh. uh, yun po yung dahilan kung bakit nagkaroon ng pagbabago sa GE program ng, ng hindi lang UP Diliman, kundi ng iba pang mga ano, constituent units ng UP. So, ang argument, uh, dahil sa meron ng K-12, hindi na kailangang ituro pang uli yung mga subject na nakuha na from, yun na nga, uh, given the two additional years. Uh, of course, the counter argument there is that it's too early to tell whether or not K-12 has made an impact. And uh, of course, there are two arguments. Uh, this is neither the time nor the place to talk much about it. Okay. But uh, what I can say is that uh, these are the efforts being done by the universities to make certain adjustments okay. uh, to the curriculum. Yes. Yan lang po. Please. Uh, Dagdag ko lang na bago pa man nagkaroon ng free tuition, may mga, may mga financial assistance programs na po ang UP para sa mga pinakamahirap na estudyante. So, hindi lang tuition nila ang sagot, kundi mga pang-araw-araw pang may stipend po para sa mga pang-araw-araw na expenses nila. Kaya nga lang, itong perang ito, dati-dati nang gagaling doon sa kinikita namin sa tuition. So, ngayon wala ng tuition, eh, hahanapan namin ng ibang source ito. Pero patuloy po ang financial assistance para sa mga pinakamahirap na estudyante. Okay, very well. Pahabol. Sige po, tumayo na kayo, tuwi na tayo. <laughs> um, ito po, para dun sa mga estudyante nyo na hindi nyo matatanggap. Si po, uh, si Pastor... Ah, okay, okay. We'll talk about it later. Sige. Okay na po. Uh, yung scholarship. He sent us those students. Ah, okay. Ah, ah, sige. Very good. He's sending 3 million to okay. 1,000 students. Okay. Congratulations. Salamat po, salamat po. Mga kaibigan, napag-usapan ng edukasyon. We expect universities, colleges whether it's a high school, barangay high school, na ma magkaroon ng uh, programa para matuto ang lahat. Pero liliwanagin ko po in closing, iba yung pagiging magaling sa magulang. Dahil sa kung magaling na pero magulang pa, wala po tayong patutunguhan bilang isang republika at bilang isang lipunan. Nais kong pasalamatan ng ating mga panauhin. Who took time out to be with us, who took our questions seriously. Magandang umaga po at maraming salamat. I hope this will not be the last appearance ni Vice President. At uh, maraming pa tayong mapapag-usapan. Magandang araw po. God bless us all. God bless the Philippines. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.